What's up guys, it's Dave, and this is going to be the first practical LXC video. I'm going to show you the basic commands for creating, managing, uh, monitoring, and configuring LXC containers. So that is uh, OS-based virtualization that's been mainlined into the Linux kernel as of like a month ago. Just to review the last video, which is sort of a philosophical, theoretical introduction, LXC is just a technology that uses existing kernel features, now newly existing kernel features, uh, to create a C group or control group and manage that. C groups are just like process namespaces. So if you're in that namespace that your container's in, it looks like a real machine and you can run normally numbered processes inside of it. However, it's all running inside of a single process on the parent machine. So just to illustrate this a little bit, I've left out some technical accuracy for ease of understanding here, but basically you've got, this would be the child namespace and this is the parent namespace. So this is your regular operating system that's running on your physical machine. And you're running a bunch of different programs um, on this, like it just continues down here. And inside of this container thing, which is running as a process, you've got another process namespace. So this is one namespace, this big thing here. And inside of it is another you would call this a child namespace. And this is running its own init as process one. And from, from this container's perspective, it looks like if you ask it, what's process one? It's like, uh, oh yeah, it's, it's init and it's this init, even though this is a different process and a different instance of init than this is. And this version of Deus Ex is running in addition to this one. So this child can't see that there's something running outside of it. It just sees its own little namespace and believes that that is the whole world. So that's basically, very basically, what's happening inside C groups. Um, and thanks to some other very, much newer features in the kernel, like uh, like even user namespacing, you can now run these things inside of an unprivileged user process. Basically, LXC gives you file system isolation more and more uh, since kernel 3.12. It's pretty realistic. Um, I.O. rate limiting, memory limits, so like your containers can't completely soak up all the resources of your host machine. You can do CPU quotas, network isolation, but you can also pass through real network devices. And it gives you some measure of security. It's not quite as stable as like FreeBSD jails or Solaris zones yet, but uh, it's certainly maturing quickly. And I think since it's in the, in the kernel, it's... Uh, it's going to be developed pretty fast. Uh, LXC 1.0, which I'll be working with, is available in Ubuntu 14.04, which is just released at the time that I'm making this video. And they claim, the developers claim, it'll be supported for five years with bug fixes and stuff. So I think this is a reasonable one to start a tutorial with. The nice thing is, uh, for the technical people out there, when you create an LXC machine, it does a ton of stuff in the background for you, uh, like creating virtual network adapters, attaching them to a virtual like bridge device that's running on the host. And you just like never have to deal with a lot of this crap that you have to configure on, like even if you, you're creating a new FreeBSD jails, those things are like time consuming and annoying. Yeah, so it does a lot of this stuff. So it has its own like network bridge and DHCP server included. Let's get started. We just need to get this thing installed and working. Uh, let's start a new terminal here. Um, uh, just do an update and install LXC. It's a single package. So it's incredibly simple to get started. So you can see the stuff it's installing, some kind of C group management thing, network bridging utilities. Uh, the, all these tools are built with Python, I think. So you've got all the Python stuff coming with it. Um, I think Yuka is for Eucalyptus and like cloud image. This is all like Ubuntu cloud crap because it comes with um, it comes with default templates that you can create that are like Ubuntu cloud machines that are ready to push up to the Ubuntu cloud. Uh, we're not going to do that, but you know it's there if you want it. And there you go, LXC, the templates, and UID map for namespacing UIDs or rather mapping. UIDs if you want to do user namespaced, unprivileged LXC containers. If that sounds too technical, just ignore what I just said. But I know some of you are going to get excited by it. And I'm one of those guys. I'm like, you know, just picture me here and, you know, like the 
the the basement, the stereotypical mom's hacker basement, you know, like, oh god, kernel three thirteen just came out. Oh, username spacing supported. Oh god, so sexy. <laughs> is that a realistic image? I think so. Okay, so this thing is set up. I now have LXC the package that is all the tools and stuff installed. And we can go ahead and create our first machine. So we're not going to be creating unprivileged machines yet. That's a little bit more complicated. If you're running services that are like accessible from the internet, like an SSH server for your network or something, I would use a uh, namespace, like an unprivileged container. It's much easier to start with regular containers. So we're going to be doing sudo. And the command is lxc create. That creates lxc containers of type we'll just do another Ubuntu container and then we'll give it a name of my first container. Okay, so by default, uh, before I hit enter, you should know, basically, this is creating a type Ubuntu and if I just say Ubuntu and don't specify like an architecture or anything else, it will take the architecture, so in my case 64-bit, from the host. It'll just sort of copy what you've got on the host. So this will take the release of Ubuntu and the architecture of your host if you don't specify something else. All right, so let's do this. So the first time you do this, it's basically like doing a network install of the operating system base. So this is just going to download sort of a bare bones package. There's not gonna be like a graphical user interface or a desktop software or other stuff. It's gonna be the very base install with just the kernel and basic user land utilities and all that other stuff. So any software you want, you're gonna to have to install manually after this. It does install the base system with the package manager, so that's fine. Uh, again, it will download all this like a normal net install the first time. However, it will cache all the files that it downloads in, I think it's var cache lxc, and there there'll be a directory with the release name. So like for this, it'll be a, a directory named uh, trusty. Any future installs I make, will simply use those cached, I guess binaries, all that cached data. So you, if you've got a slow connection, like I right now have a slow connection, you only need to do this once. Now again, for every new template you download, say if I create a new, uh, container with Arch Linux on it, I'm going to have to go out and fetch those files once also. So the first time is going to be slow. All future downloads are fast. I'm just going to skip to the end here. This is going to take a while. Okay, the install is complete. We've now got a container. You can see our default user and password are both Ubuntu. Um, you can just use sudo. So the Ubuntu user has sudo rights in there. It's basically just like a new install of Ubuntu. And I'm guessing root doesn't have a password set. So the way to now attach uh, is, well, we'll do an LXC list with fancy. And that will show us we have no running machines. To start up our first machine that we've just created, do sudo LXC start name my first container. Now, we're going to do this in the next video, but in this video, we won't use the daemon option, dash D. Um, so it'll just attach to standard out here. And the only way to get out of this will be to shut down the machine. But we're going to do that. So we're logging into the machine, starting the machine and logging into it. And here we are. Ubuntu. And Ubuntu. We can... I recommend the first thing you do is obviously change the password uh, to something incredibly more, much more secure. So uh, we've changed the password. You can see uh, it was an exciting process because I've never seen a Unix system enforcing password length when you're setting it. I'm guessing root could maybe do it um, if I did like pseudo password Ubuntu, but uh, who cares? Good, so we've got a machine we can see uh, all these processes are running inside the container. So there's nothing you see here that, that is coming from outside from our host machine. So you can see our host name is my first container. And maybe interesting, 
um, our interfaces. It thinks it's just an automatically configured Ethernet zero. This is a virtual device. This isn't real. This is good. And uh, that completes our first video. You now have a machine installed and running. To get out of this, you'll see uh, you can't just control C or control D. You'll just be prompted to log in again. So you'll have to do a power off or a shutdown H now. So she shuts down, and we're back at my Linux machine. That's it. Welcome to LXE. In the next video, we will cover basic management of these things uh, in depth. So you'll learn starting and stopping containers, running them as daemons, automatically starting them, where to change configuration options. Um, we'll primarily work by SSHing into the container, and we'll learn about like freezing, unfreezing, snapshotting or cloning containers, etc. A lot of good stuff coming up. Um, if this is helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and then go to the next video because we've got a ton more to talk about. See you there.